This video should hopefully give you all the information you need to know about GPUs, from how they work to what you're looking for when you're buying them, and a few other bits of information as well. The first thing I want to talk about is just a light explanation of how graphics cards or graphics processing units actually work. GPUs are often known as parallel processors because they have thousands of cores that can all do computations at the exact same time. The calculations, especially in gaming that they're normally doing, are calculations on vertexes, or basically points in 3D space with an X, Y, and Z, or a Z, depending on where you're from, uh, axis, which then uh, is connected to two other points to make a triangle, and that is called a primitive or a polygon, if you've probably heard of that one, and that basically is the shapes that you see on the screen. Those shapes are then put through a process called rasterization, which is basically just converting the shapes with, you know, mathematical equations that work them out into actual pixels or pixel fragments to then be colored or shaded and given, you know, some texture to them and then displayed on the screen. Drivers are the next big thing that I want to talk about, and they play a big role in how the graphics card actually works, along with adding some extra features as well that you might very well be interested in. The driver is a sort of low-level program that works with the operating system, normally Windows, to actually allow the operating system and the games that run on that system to actually make use of the graphics card. The driver effectively acts like a translator for the graphics card to make sure that all of the instructions that the game is asking the graphics card to produce are actually, you know, the instructions that the graphics card would understand. As I said, the drivers often have extra features as well, so stuff like Nvidia Shadow Play and GeForce Experience are great things that you can have added so that you have game optimization built in. Also on the AMD side of things, you have some really interesting features including Relive, which is fairly similar to Shadowplay, which allows you to stream to Twitch or YouTube gaming or whatever else you fancy directly from your driver. Uh, also adding custom overlays and webcams and stuff like that. You also have uh, Radeon Chill, which uh, dynamically drops your processor speed so that you can get slightly lower FPS while you're not moving around too much, but reduce power consumption and temperatures. Installation of a graphics card in a PC is one of the simplest things you can do. They have what's called a PCI Express bus on the bottom of them. That's this sort of bus here with a little lock on the back. And then you have the back plate which has these two prongs that stick into the side of the case. When installing them, all you have to do is make sure that the PCI lock that would normally cover the small tab at the back of the PCI slot uh, is unlocked or pushed down. You then simply push the card in, in the right orientation of course, screw in a couple of screws in the back of the case, plug in your power connectors which are very important. If you don't plug those in, the graphics card could potentially be damaged or generally just won't work. So it's very important you plug those in if your graphics card does have them and then you're all set to go. Of course it is important to note when installing an upgrade graphics card to make sure that you plug in your display connectors to the graphics card and not into your motherboard otherwise you'll be using the onboard graphics from your CPU and not your shiny new graphics card. Now the final note and in installation is if you're including a very long big and heavy graphics card like this one the R9 Fury from Asus then uh, you might want to pick up a GPU support. Now these are normally just simple brackets that hold the back of the graphics card up so that you don't have all the weights on the PCI slot and the rear screws you have some extra supports as well. There's actually been some very interesting posts on the PC Mastery subreddit uh, with people using different figurines and that sort of thing as sort of GPU supports, but people like Cooler Master do do uh, some very interesting standalone supports that you can pick up for, depending on where you are, fairly cheap. The next sort of category here I want to talk about is purchasing tips. I think the first thing for me is that I definitely recommend you check out actual benchmarks and reviews of the graphics cards you're going to buy. If you're planning on picking up, especially a brand new one straight off of launch, I would recommend waiting just a couple days to see some of the first launch reviews, see how well it performs, see what the price to performance is compared to other you know, vendors, other versions of even the same graphics card, if that's what you're going for. And especially, you know, the driver support and that sort of stuff that I definitely recommend you, you just take a look at first. If you're planning on building a new PC, and especially if you're on a very tight budget, as an overarching generalization, and especially if you're planning on just gaming as well, I would generally speaking say that I would recommend a better graphics card over a better CPU. So for example, I might recommend going for a GTX 1060 6 gig over the 3 gig model and getting the 6400 i5 as opposed to the 6500 or that sort of thing. This is an 
isn't a hard and fast rule, especially if you're planning on doing other things that aren't just gaming, you know, stuff like video editing, 3D modeling, game development, or anything else that is also intensive, that you might want to go for a heavier CPU rather than GPU, but again, it's up to what you actually want to do with the system. A thing to note if you're planning on upgrading your current system is make sure that your power supply is compatible with the graphics card that you are buying. Some graphics cards, for example, again, this R9 Fury has two 8-pin power connectors, which means that it requires 75 watts from the PCI slot, as well as up to an extra 300 watts or 150 watts per 8-pin connector. So in theory, this graphics card can require up to 375 watts of power. Some power supplies are, you know, 300 or 350 watt power supplies, and even some 500 watt power supplies might not have the necessary connectors to be able to connect up. So especially if you've bought an OEM type system, a system from someone like Dell, you might want to check inside the case first to make sure that your power supply actually has the connectors that you would need to power it up. And I think my final piece of buying advice is look at the use case that you want to use it for. If you just want to use your graphics card for 1080p gaming for the next couple of years until you can afford a brand new system and that sort of thing, and this is just a stopgap card, then you might want to go for a lower end card, something like a GTX 1063 gig or maybe a 1066 gig if you have the money to stretch for that. But if you're going for, you know, 4K ultra high res gaming, then you might want to go for something more like a GTX 1080 or Titan XP if you can afford that, of course. If you can't afford that, you might want to change your uh, expectations just a little bit there, as even a 1070 can struggle at times on very high to ultra settings. So again, you might also want to turn that down. The other thing to mention is if you want to do other things such as video editing, for example, you might want to go for a graphics card that is better supported by your video editing program. Some video editing programs use CUDA a lot better than they use OpenCL and vice versa. So depending on which graphics card and which uh, you know video editing or whatever else, you know, 3D modeling uh, or anything else program that you use, you might want to go for one with the more supported acceleration. So I think that mostly covers my everything you want to know about GPUs video. Of course, there are certainly other things that I could talk about here, but I think I'd like to keep it relatively simple and fairly accessible so that for the people who don't necessarily know any of this already, it's a good starting point and then they can look further into extra stuff. So if you've got any other thoughts about what I should talk about in these videos, especially uh, for future videos, I think the next one that I'm going to do is monitors and then eventually I'll get around to doing CPUs, RAM, SSD and other, other things like that. So feel free to let me know in the comments down below what sort of things I should cover, what sort of things I might have missed from this video or anything else, any of your thoughts on graphics cards in general, the state of the market or anything. I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love to hear from you again in the comments and of course subscribing. Feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter as well. It's just at TechTeamGB on both. So uh, feel free to hit me up there. I love having a conversation with all of you. Of course, if you want to check out graphics card prices or just support me in any way, please do use the Overclockers UK or Amazon affiliate links in the description down below. They genuinely help me out. They support these videos and keep the lights on that sort of stuff. And of course, if you're not buying anything at the moment, the best thing you can do to help is share the video with anyone you think might find it useful, whether that's on Reddit or tech forums or just on Facebook and Twitter. Anything is helpful, so please do it when you can. And otherwise, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to check out some of the other videos. I'll leave some over here for you. And of course, the subscribe button over here. And otherwise, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next one.